today, like I said, we'll be learning how to download Lancer data, Sentinel data, and how we can use Google Earth Engine for gathering our geospatial data for use in our GIS environment like ArcMap, QG, so whatever software you want to make use of. So, to start, we have to navigate to uh, our Google. Yeah, we navigate to Earth Explorer. That is uh, the United States Geological Survey. You get that? So we navigate to the United States Geological Survey. We are sorry. Thank you. Yep, all right. So you can search for Earth Explorer, that is the United States Geological Survey website. So you connect, you connect your, you connect your system to your internet. So you search Earth Explorer. So I have it already. So that's it. If you could recall, we make use of this website to download our digital elevation model the other time. Did you recall? Using the short radar topographical mission SRTM of 30 meter resolution. So we are able to download uh, the SRTM data then. So this time around, we'll be downloading Landsat data and Sentinel data for use in our AGIS environment. So this is the interface. We've started. So this is the interface of Multibay installer on software by Bata Bata, so you can take it off. You can take your system along. You can use it. So the content we are we are going to work with today is we are going to learn how to download Lancer data, Sentinel data, and introduction to Google Earth Engine on how to gather the special data for further processing and analysis in our agile environment. Or maybe change the direction. Like, like I said, this is a website that integrates a lot of geospatial data. United States Geological Survey. Yes, yes. So with that, we can... So the first thing you do in this environment here. Raphael, are we together? Raphael, are we together? The first thing we do here is... We define our study area. We define our study area. So, how do you do that? You can either bring in your KML file, or you bring in your shape file, or you define your area of interest. This is my study area, Ilefe, right? So, I want to work with OAU. But I need to define the area of interest I'm working with. So in this case now, I'm going to use map. I'm going to use this icon. Use map. All together. Click on this. You're going to have your area of interest as divine by you. Out together. Raphael, out together. As soon as you are done, now, we have different mission pertaining to satellite, like your Landsat satellite. We have Landsat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Your 6 is not, is not functioning. 7, 8, and 9. Your 1 to 5 
I think those one works for your early days, like 90, I think they started 1982 or 1985. That's when the Landsat data starts from. So it depends on the data you want to work with. Like let's say I want to carry out land use land cover for 1990 or year 2000. In that case, the data set I'll be making use of is Landsat. But the mission will be is either one to five. You can take Landsat 9 for only days data. It's not possible. It's a recent Landsat uh, mission, your Landsat 9. You can, you can use your Landsat 9 to, to get an Odin day uh, uh, imagery data set. So in this case, you define the date range of, of what you want to work with. That is, now, based on my own decision, I want to work with the year 2000. Someone can take 1982, 1983, 1984, depending on your choice. So I want to work with the year 2000. So in this case, I'm going to select my year to be, I'm going to select my year to be 2000. All together, you select your year to be 2000, then the month will be January. All together, and you can click on the date that is, I'm taking Saturday 1, January 2020. Oh, sorry, 2000 rather. All together. You, it's a choice. It's a decision. I'm just explaining how you can download your Landsat data. Let's go. Well so now, as we know that your date is like a range, like a range value, like data. You are working from so so time to so so time. It's a range. So you are dividing from and to. All together. Where you are working from to where you are going, right? Now, for this, I've already searched from January 1, year 2000, to Umi, are you with us? Now, let me take December. So I want every Landsat data set that falls within January 1, 2000 to December 31st, 2000. All together. So, this is December already, so I can specify the year, 2000, and then 31st. All together. So, you specified your time range. That's the first thing when you are trying to download your imagery data set. Now, the next thing you select is your cloud cover. Your cloud cover is like all these uh, accumulation of all these, uh, what's it called? As soon as you define your study area, I've selected the date range. The next thing you do here is you click on your cloud cover. I have to specify my cloud cover to range between 0% to 10%. So you just drag. Your phone, your phone is ringing. You drag this back, Gumi, are we together? You know this one. You drag this back till you reach 10%. Yeah, I prefer using 10% because, you know, with this 25 percent your cloud cover seems like it's going to affect your, your data when you're trying to process. We are trying to provide your sample class. Built up area is somehow similar to that of the cloud cover. So it's going to lead to like increase in one of the classes. It's going to affect one of the classes when you're doing your classification. So that's the reason why you have to choose a cloud cover free data set. That is, you don't have any effect of cloud. I, I would get it now. So that's how it works. So it's better you take within the zero to 10. 
and I'm going to show you the characteristics of this imagery we want to download. The range is always between 0 0.2, whatever. It's not even up to my 5, the cloud cover. It's not even up to 5 sometimes. So once you select the cloud cover range, the next thing you do is you click on your data set. So you have a lot of data sets. But for this case, we are working with Landsat. All together, we are working with Landsat. So you'll be able to see Landsat. This is Landsat data. Click on the plus button. All together, the plus sign. For those that are working with land use land cover as their project, this is the step you're going to take to achieve your tax done. So you click on the plus sign for the Landsat, then you click Landsat 2, collection, Landsat collection 2, level 1. So you have Landsat 1 to 5, multi-spectral sensor, classification 2, level 1. We have Landsat 4 to 5, thematic mapper, classification 2, level 1. You have enhanced, enhanced thematic mapper, that is Landsat 7. And we have Landsat 8 to 9, operational land, imager, only, and Tama infrared reflect or uh, infrared sensors. So, for this case, we are working with. Okay, what's the question? Yeah, they exist, but they exist for holding this record. Okay. Raphael, Asgo, all together. So, you pick Landsat 1 to 5 because it deals with what? Only this data. All together. If you pick Landsat 9, it won't work. You won't get any data. You won't get any data. Now, the next thing now is. I don't need anything, I don't need the additional criteria. So what I'll just do is I'll just go straight to my results. Yeah, one to five. So I'll go to my results straight away. So we can click on the results. Did you see that? No what? No results found. So in that case, you go back to your data set. You check for Landsat 4 to 5. And you click on your result again. No, you have to be very careful. Your data set is of two now. Did you see that? How together? Do you have data now? You should have. You should. Man? I choose uh, 2000. No results for both. So that means, in that case, you can specify out together. So that means there's a problem with the 2000 for that area. So that is data on availability. So you, you cannot pick, you cannot take a range, maybe from 1990 to maybe 2000. So every available data that falls within that range will be generated. So you cannot decide which year you want to choose for your analysis altogether. So those are the factors or the problem encounter when you're trying to select the year to work with during your analysis. Sometimes when you pick, I want to work with the year 2000, when you go online and later you see there is no data set for that year. So it has spoiled your, your analysis already. So in that case, you have to like specify the date range, maybe like 1990 to year 2000. So every available data set Within that region, within that year, will not be provided. All together now. So that's the way it works. So I'll go back to my search criteria and I'll choose from year. Yeah. You can choose, let's say 1990. I'm choosing 1992, year 2000. All together. So I want to see every data that's available within these specified years. 
within range of 1990 to 2000. So let's go back to our results. Did you see that? So we have data for what? 1999. I want you to get a uh, Raphael. I want you to get a. Make sure you are following what we are doing. Let's go. I want to get a. So can we see that? Can we see that? We have all those down data. Did, did you toggle with this? You know, if you select Lancer 1 to 5 and Lancer 4 to 5, uh, both of them. Now, you have to toggle in which, in between this. Yeah. Like, you didn't check it under your data set. Check it under your data set. Yep. Should, should have to now click on Lancer 4 to 5. One. What is it? I chose. 1992 year 2001. Yeah. So now, I want to get a, that's the full scene of Landsat. That's the full scene, 185 by 185 kilometers. That's the scene. Now, to check the characteristics of this image. You click on this preview. Out together. So here is the here is the preview. So as you can see, the date of acquisition, the uh, collection number, the part and the row, the full scene. The start time is 1991. The stop time is this. I will together. You can check that. Your cloud cover is 0, 0.00. So we are free from cloud cover there. Yeah. 1991. Study the Study the audio divine. Eating doesn't stop our own class. We can eat and learn. So, you can close this and then download the icon here. The icon is located there. This is the icon to download. If you don't have any account, you can create that later. But as soon as I download mine, you can bring your flash, I'll send it to you. So, <laughs> so you are going to click on the product option. Are we together? The, you click on the download icon. You're going to have this. Now, product option. And then you download the entire. You download the entire bundle. So that is how to download. So that is how to download your Lancer data. So the next one is how to download your Sentinel data. 
So want to download Sentinel data. <laughs> to download your Sentinel data, your Sentinel starts started 2015 to date. 2015 to date. We don't have all these imagery data set for Sentinel. Started 2015, year 2015. 2015 to date. Lancet 8, 2015. So, and the sites where you can download your Sentinel data. 2015. So, where you can download your Sentinel data from. Sorry. Are you closing the door? Close our door. Copernicus. Copernicus. This is where to download your Sentinel data. Before, your yes, yes, as. The data set for Sentinel, but it was later removed. Yeah, Copernicus. Your USGS has the data set for Sentinel before, but it was later removed. We don't know why. Alpha, Rafa, or are you following? Just though, as if you don't know all these things. You get my point, sir? You don't know it. Just as if you don't know it. I know you know it, right? So, what to do now is. Where's that go? Alright. Open access all. Now, for this, we want to carry out land use using different mission for OAG. We're going to use Landsat, we get the result. We're going to use Sentinel, we get the result. Did you get it now? Different mission. We're going to do land use land cover for Landsat, pertaining to OAG. We're going to do land use land cover using Sentinel mission, pertaining to OAG. We have a good result, right? Now, we now do another one for Lancer, 2022 for OAU. We now take Sentinel, 2022 for OAU. Did you get my point now? So you now see the difference. What I'm saying is that we're going to download different data sets pertaining to different years because we want to work with afforestation and deforestation mapping over for a very long year. So we want to see whether there's a decrease in vegetation leading to increase in built-up area. Did you get my point? That's deforestation. Or maybe there's a, there's a decrease in built-up area leading to increase in forest area, which is what? Afforestation. So we'll be able to see the trend between 1991 and 2022. We need two, two data sets. No. But we have different mission. We have Landsat mission. We have Sentinel mission. Iconos. Um, CSAT, QuickBed, and whatever, a lot of it. We'll be using two missions for this task Landsat and Sentinel. But your Sentinel started from 2015 to date, right? So you're going to use 2015 to 2022 for Sentinel to check your afforestation and forestation map, maybe your assignment. Did you get my point now? But for the class one, we'll be using your Landsat data. From 1991 to 2022. Lancet. Sentinel. Yeah, of course, you're going to get a result for both missions and you check the difference between them. Did you get my point? But I just want to teach us how we can have access to those data the Sentinel data and the Lancet data. So you're just done with the Lancet data. 
So we want to migrate to uh, Sentinel data now. So you can click on this link. So the Copernicus is having some maintenance issue. So they redirected us to this new link. So I want us to touch part of Gogat engine before we go. Even if it is introduction, we must touch it. The Gogat engine. Explore the data. So, we've downloaded the one for the 1991 before we all came over here. So, we now navigate to our ArcMap environment. Like I told you, the first thing you do in your ArcMap environment is to do what? Who can remind me? You set the coordinate system, right? The properties. There are many ways you can go to the properties. Is that you double click this or you right click, you go to the properties. All together. This is the first tutorial video we have online. So you go to your coordinate system. These are the favorites. These are the coordinate system I work with. So since OAU is what? What is the projection uh, projected coordinate system for OAU? UTM zone what? 31. Yep. Yeah. There are some that have been, uh, I've seen this issue. Yeah. Mina. No, Mina. We have geographical datum for Mina. We have projected datum for Mina. It's two things. Don't get it wrong. It's geographic. It is. I prefer using it because as soon as you're done with your job, you can you can check or you can upload to your Google or whatever. Because the datum of Google map, everyone is WGS. So if you are using Mina, that one is pertaining to your own country. You get my point. So if you send that Mina to Google, it, there will be error, distortion will occur. Because Google doesn't recognize Mina. In Cameroon, I think they are using Mina too, right? Cameroon is using Mina. So there will be conflict of that one. So that's the reason why I prefer using my word geodetic system, WGS. So I don't have any issue. If anybody is asking me, you want it in Mina, I'll just project it from WGS straight to Mina. I don't always work in Mina. Did you get my point, sir? So that's it. Thanks. Are we all together? Yeah. So, to, to set your coordinate system, you go to your properties, and then you click on the projected system, and then click OK. As soon as you are done, the next thing you do what is what? The next thing you do is, you are working with land design cover. Don't answer this video. They already know it. You are working with your land design cover. Third area, the shaper, which is what? OAU, right? So you import your shaper. How do you import your shaper? You already know that. Yes or no? There are many ways you can. Yeah, is it that you come here? Is it that you come here? You add your data, or right click, you add your data, or you can drag. You can drag, yeah. So those are the three. Was Methods you can use in downloading your. Okay, it's more download level. So, I already have this. This is 1991. This is 1991 data. Right click here, and then. You extract this. How together? You said? Now, the first thing is you do what? You bring in your study area. Of course, I'll send it to Paulina. Do you have a flash? Do you have a phone? You have a phone? <laughs> Solomon! Solomon, you flash. You have a brother, Solomon. Part one. You go to the lady. No, you can, you can talk. 
Just try it. You can talk. You can talk. They say you shouldn't talk. Everybody has the freedom to talk. So I've added my study area. Now, the next thing you do here is you bring in the what? The bands. Normally, your, your band one corresponds to what? That is for your lancers one to five. Your band one corresponds to blue. Yeah, this blue band. Your band one corresponds to blue band. Your band two corresponds to what? Green band. Your band three corresponds to what? Red band. Band four corresponds to NIR, near infrared. I think five short wavelength, S, W, I, R, one and two. And then we have CIR, panchromatic, and so on and so forth. So this is remote sensing. It's online. Don't worry, it's online. I will send you, I will send you that. But the major, the major, uh, the major band we need for carrying out land use and cover. It includes band one, band two, band three, and band four. Note that. Yeah, for Landsat, Sentinel is different. Did you get that now? And for the Landsat mission, we have two cases. For Landsat 1 to Landsat 5, you need band 1, band 2, band 3, and band 4. Are you together? For Landsat 8, 9, you need band 2, band 3, band 4, and band 5. Yeah. Because your band 1 for the recent Landsat mission is poster or aerosol blue. It's not that blue. It's poster or aerosol blue. So it's not blue. Are you with me now? So now the Landsat mission we downloaded is Landsat 1 to 5, right? So in this case, we only need band 1, band 2, band 3, and band 4. Out together now. One, two, three, four. For Landsat, one to five. So can we bring in the bands and let's see. And sometimes, sometimes uh, we have what we call um, multispectral band. That is, I think, I think that one can only work in Angus Group. But let me take it there. We'll soon get it. It's just an MTL file. Just bring it that MTL straight to into actions. Every band is within that MTL. So you cannot toggle which one you want to have to be corresponding to your band one, band two, band three. But don't let me go there first. Let's open and insert our band one, band two. Mumi, are we together? You don't share part. Oh boy, oh yeah, what's your question? Move from Alec on. Move from Alec on now. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Show a lot of in him and Yeah, let's try to add our bands. Band one, hold your control button. Two, did you get that? Three and four. Oh, I, I don't think I included four. Four. Out together. Don't worry about someone different. Just know your band. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Is the display order? Is the display order? So I have band one, band two. Don't forget to save your drawing. Control S. Desktop. Sonia. Land is Lanko. 
Now, you can decide this same case apply for any study area you want to work with. If you are working with Ilefe, you bring in the study area to the what? To the Ilefe. All together. If you are working, are you with us, sir? Are you with us? Thank you, sir. If you are working with Ekiti, if you are working with anywhere, the same protocol is applied. What just matter is download the Landsat data pertaining to that study area and then repeat for that year of your choice and then repeat the same steps. All together. Good. Now, the are something called color composite display, CCD, in remote sensing. It's of two. We have the true color composite and the false color composite. Your true color composite is as if you are looking at the real world, the way it is, the way it appears. And your false color composite is like you are having it in the sense that your vegetation is appearing to be red and many other things. Did you get my point, sir? We have color composite display. That's the next thing you do. We have two types. We have TCC and FCC. TCC, true color. FCC, false color. Your false color is used when you're trying to do analysis on vegetation. So I prefer using my FCC compared to TCC. I would get it now. So in this case, I would do both. Did you get my point? So it now depends on which one you want to use to provide your sample class. All together now. So good. Now, there's a two core composite. There's a geoprocessing two core composite. Did you see that? Composite band. Composite bands. Yeah. Tetra knot. WGLC term tetra knot. Like how? Band 3, double click on it to read it. 3, still loading out. But before we do this, I do, I do advise students. 3 to 1, yeah. But before we do that, wait, wait, before we do that, I want us to clip each band with respect to the study area first. Because the reason I say that is that if you perform your composite band now and you try to clip that composite, it will reduce the resolution. Did you get my point? There's a decrease in the resolution of that whatever composite display you are using. So it is always good to make use of or, or to, to clip your study area pertaining to each band before you now match, before you perform the composite band operation. All together now. So good. Now, be, be, before we apply this composite, let's, who can tell me the tool we use for clipping raster? Clip raster. Clip raster. That's it. Close that one. Search for clip raster. Yeah, search for clip Did you see that? The first one, yeah. Data management. All together. Now, it's asking me to input my word, my raster, right? Now, input the raster. I'm, I'm inserting band one first. So it's asking me my output extent. So 
this will be my study area. OAU boundary. And then, don't forget to always check this. Use input features for clipping geometry. The reason is that it's going to clip with respect to the boundary alone. If you didn't check this, it's going to clip with respect to a fixed shape, which is a rectangle. Did you get my point? That's the difference between using this optional checkbox. Check it. After you're done, you can rename this. You can rename this to 1991. Okay, let me just say 91. Let me just say one. One. Did you get that? Rename it to whatever you want. And then click OK. So it will work out. Can you see that? Can you see that? So, you repeat the same thing for other bands. So, that, that's the first thing to do. Your geometric correction and your radiometric correction. Your radiometric correction is taking some factor into consideration, including the position of the sun, the, the sensor, the type of the sensor, or the characteristics of the sensor, and I think it's the main one. I forgot. I think the gate of opposition looks like. There are three important things are dealing with the dimension correction. I think the position of the sun, um, the sensor type, and I think the gate of the image of the sun. There are three factors to be considered when dealing with your, because you are converting your, your radiance value to top of atmosphere radiance. Your digital number, DN to top of atmosphere radiance. That is your radiation correction. Am I right? Yeah. You, you, you didn't check. You didn't check that box. That's why. There's a box you have to check that is optional. As clipping, you have to check it here. You say what? Is of two. We have TCC, FCC. So now let's search for should get here, Wumi. Wumi, or to get it. Alright. So let's search for composite. Composite band. Now, select 432. You're going to see the difference. 43. Two out together now. Four three two. Did you see mine? Sorry, and then name it to be SCC. Then click OK. You're going to see a result. Rename it to FCC. Did you see that? Did you see what I have? So, this is my first color composite. Now, for my true color composite, go back to search composite band and search for three, Wumi, three, two, one. So, if it's one here, you are in here. One. Now, change the name and rename it to TCC. One TCC. That one will look as if you are looking at your Google map, your satellite image. You will see the result. Did you see that? Let's thank you. Do you have the same thing? You can see that one looks as if you are looking at your Google Earth image. Three to one. Don't know this thing by 
by the band name. You have to know it based on the, the uh, how do I put this thing? There's an appropriate stance we use. Instead of band one, band two that we are, we are talking about, we, we use red band. Do you get my point? We don't use band one, band two, band three. Eh? Okay, all right. So now, based on this, you now decide. You now decide which one do you want to make use of? Is it TCC or FCC? I prefer using FCC. Out together. This is you can remove all those bands, simple single band. You can remove all those ones. You don't need it again. Out together. This is your FCC. Did you see that? I can tell the level of the vegetation. The vegetation appears red. Did you see that? I can see some dark, some bright, some pink. Did you get that? So that is the level of the, the classification. Did you get my point now? And you can see these are the rocks. They are the bare, they are, these are the rocks, the rocky parts. They are bare land. All together, they are bare lands. These are the rock, the rocky area. You can see it corresponds to the bare land. All together, and these are a built up area, like cyan blue, cyan blue. These are how you identify. And this is your your water. Sometimes it applies black, sometimes it, 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 it appears blue. Black blue. That is the denotation of your... So, for this case now, we have... How many classes can we bring out from this imagery? Can we write it down? We have forest. Yes or no? Those are the dark, the dark red areas. We have the... We, let's, we have your beer land, you write. They appears green or brown, light brown. Green to light brown. Your bare land. That is out. That is photo interpretation. You interpret using color. We have different, different method. We have size, tone, shape, texture, association. We have seven. Are we together? But most of our times we use color. Color is the, the major one we use most. Color. This is color red, bright red. What does it mean? Your bright red signifies farmlands or crop land. You get my point? Your pink, your pink, pink red signify straws. Straws or, or grassland. It's like level of vegetation. So here are dense. That is the forest. Very light. That's the color. And trending down and down, we have the pink, the pink color, pink red. Those are your grassland or your straws. And your cyan blue represents your your beautiful. Cyan blue, the settlement. Yeah, that's your settlement. So depending on the classes you want to choose. So from this now. I can see my forest, see my cropland, see my straws, see my beautiful area, see my water bodies, see my hello, see my water bodies, and then see my airlines. So, in this case, you have to very fast. In this case, you're going. All right. But you understand the rest now? OK. <laughs> so now, how can you now proceed? You have to provide training samples. This thing is just like, who is into data science? When you're dealing with machine learning, before you can predict something, you need to get samples. Yes or no? 
Amen. So from your sample now, you can now tell us what is what. Or current sample. Yeah. Now, how do you get your sample from this imagery? You digitize. That is where your digitization comes in. You digitize. Huh? You digitize. For you to, to provide samples, this is like machine learning. You provide samples using the algorithms in your AGIS environment, you can detect your entire classified area. Yes or no? So that's the way it works. So let's quickly go to the practical aspect. Let's call the theory short. Now, I'm not going back. If you don't catch up, you don't catch up. Dad, we have to very fast. Now, the first thing to ask yourself is, do you have this classification to Z? Do you have it? Do you have this? Do you have that? If you don't have it, all right, sir. If you don't have this, if you don't have this, right click here, right click up here, and then see classification. Image classification. Out together. Out together. Good. Once you click that, you have this. Then ensure that the imagery you are working on is FCC. 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 You can remove your TCC to avoid confusion. You can remove that. So now, you are doing this. Your team is playing with you. All right. Your, tra your training sample manager. That's the next thing. Check this. <laughs> Check this. Have you done that? Hmm? So, after that, now, what is the first thing I want to bring out? I want to bring out my water bodies. So, you zoom into where you have water bodies. Did you, did you see that? This is where I have my dam. So you're going to digitize the way you see your dam, like the way you can, you, you, the way it is oriented. So now, how do you digitize? The classification is having many drawing tools. You can draw polygon, you can draw rectangle, you can draw circle. But I prefer using polygon. I prefer using polygon. So you click on your polygon, and then you start digitize. Z. You can see my cross here has changed, right? So I can start digitizing. So here is my water. Here is my water. For recent imagery, you're going to have it more clear. This is because it's it's for 1991. So that's why we have it blur. Blurry. Yeah. So as soon as you're done, left double click. Good. Double click. That's all. Then you can rename this to water. Are you together? So that is all about that. Now, the next thing I can see here is the building, the settlement. So the settlement is cyan blue. So I'll just digitize everywhere I see all this type of whatever. As soon as you're done with that one, leave it. Go ahead with another one. Did you see that? Man? Because 
It's settlement. It is built up. We want to bring every built up to one. We are training every built up, every built up. The reason why we stopped pertaining to the water, the only one, is because that's the only water we have. As we have many water, we digitize many of it. It's now a must. At least if, if it's distributed within the study area, you're good to go. But let's assume you have a very big area, you're not training sample of one. It's very stupid now. Huh? You get my point? You have to like train so that the machine will learn that, okay, whenever I see this, this is what you mean. Did you get that? So that's the way it works. Bumi, you understand this, right? Good. Amati, you understand? Don't be lost though. Now, be careful when you're trying to march. I'm done with my build up. I'm done with my sentiment, right? Now, I want to build all these classes. I want to take it to one. One class. Now, click on number two. Don't click on number one. Though. Because one is different from, what is different from building? Hey, now, shift. Hold your shift and then arrow down. Your arrow down to select others. So, after you're done with that, then you say match two. There's a match to the match training sample. So you click on the match, and then you name it to build up. Are we together? Are we together? I want to see, are we together? You digitize, then what else can I see? I can see my forest. So the forest are the dark red. The dark red. So you have to be very careful. But how are you able to do all this? It's based on research. I've done many projects with it. There's a there's a there's a I will send something to the group. It's like a picture showing you the interpretation of different lands in this land cover. So you can you can tell from that. I, I sent it to Soviet Sanya recently. I got that online. For this is forest though. The one I'm doing is forest. You can see the difference in the red color. Starting from the deep, deep one, ranging down to the lighter one. Do you get that? So the deep one signifies the dense area. Then the trend comes, the tone, difference in tone. You get my point? So the, the next tone is farmland, then the pinky area are the grassland. So after you're done with that, you can merge it, merge it together. This is a, uh, what's this? Forest. So you can see some bright one, yeah, I can see some bright red. Did you see that? The bright red. Somehow, ah, you can't see very well there. I can see my system very well. But you'll be able to see some are dark, some are bright. Some are dark, some are bright. You'll be able to see that with your recent Lancer data. You'll be able to tell the difference. Your recent Lancer data is very clean. I'm doing a cropland or whatever. Cropland or agricultural land. So let me just merge it and call this uh, agricultural. And then the shrubs, the shrubs are the one with the pink, the pink color. Did you get that? Or the grassland, the one with the pink. Normally they are very close to built-up areas like that. So
Yeah, it's like pink, pink color. It's in form of a pink color. Sometimes you can do grand survey to inspect all this. So I will call this I'll call this grassland. Did you get my point? So that's my grassland. And now from the grassland, I move on to my bear land, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That was the last one. So this is my bear land here. So it's the entire rocky area. Did you get my point now? That's my bear land. If you see those rocks, it's like light brown, green color, like. Did you see that? I mean, you know this before, right? Well, you can you can catch up, right? How are you in the land, right? What? The reason why we are having problem with this interpreting is because it's of old days. Like, if you see the recent Landsat, it's very clean. Like, very clean. You'll be able to differentiate between deep red, bright red, and pink. And the water is very clear with respect to the beer land. You'll be able to see it very well. The resolution is very mad. You can compare the sensor used in 1991 to sensor used in 2003. It's, it's different. So, advanced technology, right. So, you can rename this to beer land. So, Bierland. Yeah. So, yeah. So after I'm done with this, the next thing is don't forget to save these training samples. You have to send. You have to save this. So this is where you save. Click on. I'm oh, sorry. Just, this is load. Assuming I have an existing one. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I'm going to save these as samples. Did you get that? Samples and then click save. Save samples. So it has saved, right? It's saved already. Now the next thing you do is you create a signature file. Signature file. After you saved, you create a signature file. Click on save signature and then save this as uh, sig sign sig. S I like signs or whatever. Sig 91, 1991. Save this. This is it. This is the last icon. The last icon is create signature file. Did you get that? Are you following? You can check the video later on in case you didn't get it. Now. What? No, 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 no. I said S I N G. Sign, sign. Now, after you're done with this, we have different main. We have many classifiers. This is where your this is where your machine learning comes in. Your machine learning is a data-driven algorithm that automates your classification, your clustering and uh, prediction. So, but for this case now, the machine learning is related to classification. We are not predicting. We are not clustering. Man? Data data driven algorithms that automates. So that is the machine learning. So now you save this, right? You've, you've generated your signature file. So next thing now you do is you can clear this, you don't need it again. You just you don't need it again. I've saved it already. So yeah, I don't need it. This is where you clear. Did you see that? So you're done. You can see I still have the plus sign here. So you can just click on this to, to turn it back to my normal. Click on the select sample here to turn it back to all your hand to turn it back to the normal icon. Did you get my point? So now the next now is your classification now. We have two types of classification. Supervised and what? Unsupervised. Under your supervised classification, you provide what? Samples. Samples. And that is what we do. You provide our samples. And then the machine will learn from these samples based on the signature file we created, and then it's going to predict for us. So in this case, you can build a model for this. 
Did you get my point? Yeah. So any imagery you are bringing in, you just tell him, anywhere you see bright red, this is uh, my agricultural land. Anywhere you see dark red, this is, did you get my point? It's called deep learning packages. It's, it's online. Ezri has done that, but I don't want to talk about that. Let's take it simple, simple, like step by step, so that you understand it better. Because there's a model already that anywhere you see a Landsat data, just bring in the model to generate it based on the classes they have done. You get my point? We still take for Sentinel and a lot of like that. That's the deep learning. That's what we need to deep learning. Artificial intelligence is So, really, let's go move fast. So, but the rudiment is this. Now, we have maximum likelihood classification, we have support vector machine. We have a random forest, we have a, um, um, a KNN, that's K nearest neighbor. <laughs> so, all these things are, are classifiers. They are machine learning classifiers. Some people use random forest, some people use. But normally, what we do use is maximum likelihood classification. That's the general one we use for, the, for land design cover. So, you just click on that and you, it asks you to bring the, the raster band, then you, you tell him, I'm working with respect to the SEC. Oh, sorry, it's only one. It's only one. Did you get my point? Yeah. I'm working with respect to the FCC, and then it's saying input your signature file. Do you remember? You save it the other time. So you can just click on this, and then go to my signature file. Did you see that? So this is my signature file, signature 1991. Did you see that? So I have that. Then you click on that, and then you open. So you see that, and then. Okay. You, you leave, leave everything by default. Don't stop everything. What you just need here is just bring in the first color composite and then your signature file. So once you do that, and then you just click OK. So you wait for the reason. Did you see that? So. So this is 1991. This is 1991 land is land cover for OAG. Now you can see all these things are in grid. They're in they are represented in uh, class value or cell number in form of numbers. These numbers have their own name. If you could recall, let me remind you. Go to your classification, your training sample. You know we save this right. Now let's load it back. Then you'll be able to know which one is which one. Load training samples. Did you see that? Samples. Add. Did you see that? My water body is what? Your water body is one. Your built up area is what? The way you what? Hierarchically, the way you did it. You provide your sample. You check the video later. Check it off. Yeah. So now, after you're done with this, you do what we call your raster to polygon. Did you get my point? Because you must know the area cover for each. You can't get area from raster. It's from geometry data type. Either point, either point, point nodes from your nodes, or combination of your nodes is line. There are many of nodes, your polygon, right? So then you can get your area, your length, your blah, blah, blah. Did you get my point? <laughs> so now you cannot search for a two core. Your raster to polygon. We, we have to very fast. So you search for raster to polygon. So once you search for that, just click on this raster to polygon to drag in your raster. Drag in the feed option is the value, and then leave everything by default and click OK. So you can see it's converted to polygon. You have it in form of jargons, like yeah. So now, if you check the attribute table of this, we are having a lot of classes. Do you see that? But we, we only provided six classes, all the classifier uh, classification tasks. How do you now resolve all this to to have it back to these six classes? There's something called dissolve. You dissolve with respect to your grid code. You dissolve with, with respect to your Greek code. Yeah, featuring, yeah, you get it. Now you dissolve. So I want to dissolve this polygon so that I can have everything as one. So I want to dissolve with respect to Greek code and then click OK. 
So you're going to you're going to see everything dissolved. So this is the sub already. I can remove this. Now check the activity table of this. Did you see that now? Yeah. I have it back to my, uh, what's it called? To the classes I have here. So good. Now, what is the next thing here? I have to assign my name. An area field. You have to add a field. Then you click your table option. Add your field. Your name, NAME, that's my name, or classes. You get my point, but I prefer using name. So the type will be in text. Or class, yeah. Let me use class so that there won't be any issue. So class, the type will be text. You get my point? Then you click OK. So I have a new field created. Like a new, you are creating new columns in your Excel. So you had another table, which is what? Your area. This is your area. Then you make it float. It has to be in float. Don't, don't forget, it has to be in float because it's a decimal or uh, data type yeah so you click ok and now right click on area calculate the geometry yes and then your area is in square kilometer or square meter but i, I think ou is very small you can still do with meter or what do you think meter is okay square meter let's say you are working with the entire elephant now you deal with uh, kilometer the entire ocean you work in hectares you get my point now so now let's use sqm that is square meter and then click ok yes you see now for the build up my one corresponds to what build up oh i've now written my name here if you try to double click here it won't work why because you will start your editor so you start your editor before you can make any changes here so you click on that particular dissolve whatever you want to edit and then click ok and then what corresponds to my one water right What's correspond to my two? You forgotten? Built up. Built up area. Three is what? Good. Agricultural land, right? Grassland, right? And then this one is what? Bear land. Did you get that? Are we okay with this area? Oh, we just okay, 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 right. So we save the editor and then we stop. Did you see that? All together. Now, close that. Then you can close this. Delete all. Then close. We don't need. Now, double click this. Don't forget, I taught you symbology. You symbolize with respect to the class of different types. Go to your symbology categories based on the class. Uncheck this add or value. Then you click OK. Did you see this? Then, based on your skills, your agricultural land is always in. No. Your final land is land color uh, maps, like for producing the maps for FCC. No. For FCC and TCC, we have the final color for the production of each map. Your agriculture is, is, I think it's light brown. So those things are light brown, yeah. But you can recall, it's light brown, your bare land is gray. So those are, the, those are the standard. It's like you're working with cartography signs and symbols. So your built up is in red. So that one is constant. Built up your forest green, you're right. But the green must be deep green, okay? No. Yeah, green. What grassland is in orange, that's your light orange. That is your strobes or whatever. That is the standard color for land is land cover. So you, you can know that. So this is this is that. Did you see this now? Did you see this? 
So this is the land use land cover of OAG for for the year 1991. Did you get my point now? So 1991, let me rename this. I thought you have to rename your layer. Land use land cover 1991. So your assignment is now you're going to work with that 2022. Did you get that now? So, no, from Landsat, Earth Explorer. So we now check the change detection. What has happened so far? We now carry an analysis that from 1991 to 2022, we notice that there's an increase in built up area. There's an increase in forest, whatever, depending on the results you have. Vegetation, maybe there's an increase in water bodies because your water bodies can expand. It can expand. Your reservoir is a dam. It can expand. So now, so that is all about that one. So you can save your drawing. And then don't forget, for every, for every whatever maps you do, you, you have to build your template, your layout. You know, we have data view and the layout view. You go to your layout view and you add your map element, your tree notes, the title, the skills, the legend, and everything like that. So in this case, as we as I, I used the previous template we did there, it will have been very easy for me. As I am working in that template then, did you get my point? It will have been easy for me, but all is well. I already taught you how, you can, how, how, how to prepare a final map. I taught you that one from the previous set. So based on the knowledge you had then, you can try to bring this up into your map, just like... Yeah, yeah, I'll just throw adding it. You can add a base map here too. You can add a base map. You're trying to. So, this is the land use land cover of the OAU in 1990 in 1991. So, um, hey, now the last thing is if you want to, I'm trying to round up everything. So, six, we are over here now. How do you do you know you can create graphs? Do you know you can create graphs from your add just throw? Add map, you can create your statistical. Uh, Designs, your graphic designs like your bar charts, pie charts, and whatever. You can do that. Your app, app, app map. You can do it. It's everything is within your data here, yeah. right? Now, what do you do? You just come here and create graphs. Good. Did you get that? So I need. I can decide to change either being pie chart or vertical bar chart. Do you get my point? So I prefer bar chart. So the feed is my area and then my name, class, and the ascending order, label with class. Did you get that? And uh, next button. You can show your graph in 3D back. There's a particular thing I'm still missing here. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, side. No, 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 no. There's a particular thing I have to do here. This legend has to be at the bottom. Bottom. This legend has to be at the bottom. Okay, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, good. I got it. So, you can check the video online just to, to catch up and everything like that. So, here's the graphs. Can you see that? So here's the graph. So that means we have agricultural land. So that means in 1991, there's much practice of agri agricultural or uh, whatever practice like that. So and and, and then we have more forest too, and the grassland too. So we only have few built up, few bare lands, and few water bodies. So now 1991. So that means they still cultivate. Uh, more farming activities and whatever like that so now your area is in don't forget your area is in what square meter so you can you can change that area is in in area in square meter you get that your area in square meter your bottom is the classes you get that so you finish this so you have my graph here so I have my graph, so I can export this as um, as a picture 
on bread and then save to desktop Sonia and then say 1991 graph you get that so you save it so after you're done after you're done you close this and then you have the you close this and then you close this so so this is the you know, I save it already so it's, it's already six so we, we've come to the end of today's lecture. Man, what is it? It's on YouTube. I'll upload it to the YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll stop it. Yeah. So.